Hello, everyone. I'm Brendy Murphy, Epidemiologist and Director of Disease Surveillance at the Mobile County Health Department. Today is Monday, October 18th. Certainly hope everyone enjoyed the beautiful weather we have over the weekend. I know um, I did with my family. So I'm here today to give you this week's update on the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on Mobile County. The good news is all things are still moving in the right direction, going down. The number of cases reported to us daily is down. The number of hospitalizations is down. Um, our deaths are going down, thankfully. We still are hearing about deaths each week, but um, it, the number is getting much smaller. And that um, t percent test positive figure that we talk about quite a bit is, is still going down. In addition, emergency department visits for COVID-like illness is still quite low. So again, all good news on um, the front of the COVID pandemic with things moving in the right direction. Um, it's not over yet. We still don't know um, what to expect coming into flu season and the holidays. And I expect that we will see um, different areas maybe considering to lift mask mandates. But for now, things are good and we really appreciate everyone who's gotten vaccinated or you know who's you know wearing their mask and distancing and staying at home when they're sick those are the things we need everyone to do and thank you all um, thanks to everyone who's following that advice to keep COVID transmission lower in our community and again we just appreciate our health, our provider community our hospitals um, out there that are, are still taking care of those COVID patients who are vulnerable enough to require hospitalization for their illness and taking care of people um, through their end of life stages if they um, die with COVID. So thank you to the healthcare community and also to the community at large for helping us um, get through this very you know record breaking wave of COVID-19 transmission. Just want to mention that we, re everyone, CDC, ADPH, we are keeping our eye on that community transmission indicator. So this is the the measure by which CDC and ADPH, um, what they use to sort of establish a level of community transmission. For it was just updated at 10 o'clock this morning, and Mobile County is still in the substantial category. So we, we tell everybody when we are in substantial or high levels of community transmission, we really need to keep all these preventive measures in place. When we move to moderate or low, then there will be more comfort or more confidence and potentially, you know, removing layer by layer some of these, these precautions as we um, go through the next couple of weeks. So the community transmission risk indicator is based on the number of new cases per 100,000 people. So looking at that rate of disease and then also looking at the percent of nucleic acid amplification tests that are positive. So we are still at a very high number of cases per 100,000 population, according to CDC and Alabama, this risk measure that's been applied to every county in the U.S., we are still at substantial, and our percent positivity has dipped below 5%, so we are now in the low, but when you take those two things in, co in combination, right now we're still in the substantial category. So it will not surprise me if we move to the moderate category over the next couple of days, certainly maybe in, in, into next week, as long as all things are still going in the right direction and that is getting smaller. Those numbers getting smaller. Fewer number of people getting COVID, getting hospitalized with COVID and dying from COVID. That is our goal. So I just wanna talk a little bit about vaccination coverage. We have gotten to about 50% of, of people in Mobile County have received at least one dose. Our percent that are fully vaccinated is still around 40 percent but I just wanted to take a couple of minutes and talk about the percent of fully vaccinated people by age group because we are so thankful and proud for people who are 65 and over um, more than 
uh, 78% of you are fully vaccinated, and we know many of you are coming to us to get booster doses if you got the Pfizer vaccine. So just to sort of give you some perspective, I have this chart here that um, is available online that shows the percent of that fully vaccinated by age group. You can see these age groups down here. They have very high percentages. The one I really want to focus on are is the zero to, to 17 age group. Only 12% of that population is vaccinated. So we really need adolescents that are approved for Pfizer vaccine between 12 and 17. We need you to get in to get vaccinated. Parents of children that are that age, you know, please consider, reconsider getting your child vaccinated. We're expecting that the Pfizer data for five to 11 year olds will be reviewed soon. And it could be early November when we see a recommendation and authorization for children five to 11 to receive a Pfizer, to begin getting vaccinated with Pfizer. So stay tuned for that. CDC has already issued some planning documents sort of um, allowing pediatricians and schools and parents to prepare for the administration or the rollout of vaccine for people aged, for kids aged 5 to 11. And we, we need to get vaccination for that entire age group, 0 to 17, up much higher. Um, only 40% of people 18 to 29 have been vaccinated, and then about 53% of people 30 to 49. So those are the groups that we're really um, talking to and trying to speak with and trying to focus on when we um, encourage vaccination and, um, you know, when we're going out into the community trying to um, get more people vaccinated. Is there something that you want to, oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. I thought Mark was looking at me. He was just looking at the camera, which just pointed at me. So <laughs> a little confused there. All right. So we are beginning to do more vaccines in the community again since the vaccine at our clinic has, the demand for vaccine testing has gone down a little bit. So check mchdcares.com to see all of the public sites and clinics that we have available for both testing and vaccine this week. I think we have something scheduled just about every day, sometimes two events on the same day. So please stay tuned for that. There were there have been just two minor changes to the recommendations for fully vaccinated people. If you are fully vaccinated and you're exposed to someone who has COVID, we would like for you to get tested five to seven days after, vac after exposure. So if you've been fully vaccinated for no matter what length of time and you realize that you have been around someone who had COVID for longer than 15 minutes um, within six feet, and longer than 15 minutes, then we would like for you to get tested for COVID five to seven days after that exposure. This is a minor change. And again, it's because the vaccine, if it does what it was supposed to do, um, it'll do a good job at, pr at keeping you from getting infected. But if you did get infected, you're going to have a mild, milder illness. So you may have asymptomatic um, infection, which means you could be spreading it to others and not realize it. So again, if you've fu been fully vaccinated and you get exposed, we need you to get tested five to seven days. Stop. You can just start over. No, just keep going and we'll, we'll record, record it. it. Okay. So a little technical problem, um, we're just going to keep going and, and post it later. So again, if you are fully vaccinated and you are exposed to COVID, we need you to wear a mask for 14 days and get tested five to seven days after your exposure. And then there are also on, on CDC's website when it talks about, you know, recommendations for fully vaccinated people, there's an annex that describes what vaccines qualify as fully vaccinated and how to interpret vaccine records. So if you were vaccinated maybe in another country, um, you, there are some guidelines about if whether or not you, you qualify for full vaccination. Other things on the vaccine front, we, you know, the FDA scientific committee met 
last Thursday and Friday to consider data on booster doses for Moderna and Johnson & Johnson. We should hear from FDA this week as to whether or not they are going to authorize booster doses of Moderna and Pfizer, and then CDC will consider that information and decide um, what they're going to do. Usually they will go ahead and implement, at least to some degree, the, the recommendations of the FDA and the Advisory Committee on Immunizations Practices. So stay tuned on that. FDA Scientific Committee also reviewed data on uh, mixing doses, so but they did not take a vote on whether or not to rec recommend mixing doses. So mixing doses means you've got maybe your first dose or your first and second dose were uh, Pfizer and you're going to get a Moderna, Moderna booster. Or you got one dose of Johnson Johnson and you want to get a full series of Moderna or Pfizer. So that's what we're talking about when we say mixing doses. So still nothing concrete on that. I think first we'll see decisions on boosters from Moderna and Johnson Johnson. Then I think we will see probably guidance come out about our decisions on children aged 5 to 11 for Pfizer vaccine. And then I think the FDA will address the data um, on mixing doses as more and more data becomes available on that. So stay tuned. And just to remind you who's eligible for a Pfizer booster dose. Remember, this is a booster dose six months after you've completed your first two shots of Pfizer. So a booster dose is is approved or is authorized six months after you get your first series completed for anybody who's 65 and over, 18 and over who lives in a long-term care setting, 18 and over who has an underlying medical condition, 18 and over who work in high-risk settings, and 18 and over who live in high-risk settings. So those are the folks that we are recommending get a booster dose six months after your first dose. All right, a couple of questions someone asked on our report. We had said that there, a backlog of test results were processed on 1014 that um, resulted in a spike in the number of cases reported. And someone wanted to know how many of those 160 were actual um, cases and how many were backlogs. About 105 of them were from the backlog. So about 55 were newly reported to us. Then also a couple questions about the percent positive. So you have have heard us say that, um, you know, the percent positive is the percent of nucleic acid amplification tests that are positive, that were complete, that were conducted, right? The, well, how many of those, what percent of those were positive? Again, the denominator is all of the nucleic acid tests and the numerator are the positive, the number of positives. So that gives us the percent positive NAT tests. So sometimes the figure that the Mobile County Health Department reports is slightly different, not wildly different, but slightly different from the number that the Alabama Department of Public Health reports for the county. And then those numbers are often a few digits different from what CMS reports as percent positive. So just to, to be clear, up until September 10th, CMS used their own percent positive calculation for deciding things like, you know, how much testing and, and what type of PPE would be needed in long-term care facilities, primarily nursing homes. So they were calculating using their own data that they get through their own systems, were calculating a county positivity rate, and that was the number that they would use for nursing homes to determine what type of personal protective equipment they wore on, an, on a daily basis and other things like how frequently they needed to test their staff and that sort of thing. So that number was sometimes a bit different. Everybody has slightly different versions of the data. Um, CMS has access to data sources that Alabama does not. Uh, Alabama Department of Public Health uses most of the same data that, that Mobile County Health Department does, but it's not exactly the same. So that's why you'll sometimes see some minor differences between us and ADPH and some larger differences between us and what CMS. But starting on September 10th, CMS changed and began using the, the county 
community transition indicator for nursing homes. So now they're using the same percent positivity that we talk about. And again, if it's 4.3 and 5.9 percent, um, sometimes those you know those are, are those small differences uh, can be very easily influenced um, if we get a spike or something of that nature. So you know please don't focus so much on small changes from day to day or between small changes between you know one data source and another data source, but just looking at the overall trend. And someone else asked about the rationale between using different methods. And I think in the beginning, everyone uses whatever data they have available to them. And over time, you know, we make some minor changes where we're able to, which is why CMS, you know, switched to use in the county community transmission indicator that CDC has been putting out. That began again on September 10th. Thank you, April, for helping me get that information out. All right, so just last before, you know, we just are doing Facebook Live on Mondays now. I just want to hit a couple of tips about safer ways to celebrate the holidays. So in general, if you have, you know, people in your family who are not yet eligible for vaccine, please protect them by having eligible people vaccinated and having, you know, small gatherings and you know, making sure people are vaccinated and if they're not, have them wear a mask and distance. So wear, you know, a well-fitted mask over your nose and to the to cover your chin. If you're in an indoor setting and around people that aren't vaccinated or that you don't know their vaccinated vaccination status, avoid, you know, crowded, poorly ven ventilated areas. If you are sick, or have symptoms of, of illness, please don't attend gatherings and get tested if you've had close contact with anyone who has COVID. Might also be a good idea to ask people to get tested before they come to a wedding or come to um, a church service or um, to a gathering. These are sort of the, the new norms for us. So it would not be, um, you know, just a wild idea to do that. The health department still provides testing from free Monday through Saturday. Also, if you're considering traveling for a holiday, you know, we recommend that you delay travel until you are fully vaccinated. But if you are not and you must travel, um, you have to wear, you know, a mask. Everyone who travels has to wear a mask. But, you know, we want you to choose sort of safer travel options. So, you know, you might think about taking a personally owned vehicle with your family if they're not vaccinated rather than, for example, you know, getting on public transportation. So, you know, even regardless of vaccination status, you must wear a mask when you are on public transportation and follow those international travel recommendations. Might think about getting tested before you travel, right? Know before you go. We talked a lot about this last year during the holidays. And if you are a person that's, that has a weakened immune system or if you are taking medicine that may have weakened your immune system, you, know, you might choose to wear a mask even if you're vaccinated just to try to reduce the opportunity for transmission um, if you know that, that you have a weakened immune system or underlying medical condition that make, might make you severely ill should you contract COVID. So again... Keep gatherings small. Keep them outside to the greatest extent possible. Stay at home if you're sick or if you've been exposed. Get vaccinated. Wear a mask. Keep your distance. All of those things that we've been talking about for just over 18 months now. Can you believe it? We're going on, I think, our 19th month of being involved in this COVID pandemic. You know, way back then, some people thought, ah, this isn't a pandemic. This is just going to go away. We'll be, you know, back to normal by summer. But we just had our fourth and, um, you know, worst uh, surge of COVID since the pandemic began, thanks to the Delta variant and no way to predict where things are going to go. But we know what keeps COVID transmission low, vaccination, masking, distancing, staying at home with your sick. All right. So I'll end there for today and we will see you again Monday, next Monday at 2.30. Be safe, everybody.